Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are tonight's entertainment. And there's only one question I want answered. Where is Harvey Dent? Have you ever seen Harvey? Have you seen Harvey? Any of you seen Harvey? Ah, oh, you must be Harvey's squeeze. Do you want to know how I got these scars? Well, cause I'm the Joker, baby! Was getting this makeup all done worth it for that little skit in the beginning? No, probably not. But here we are, and let's get into the Joker 2019 review. The Joker is an origin film for the infamous DC villain and Batman's arch nemesis, the Joker, and though there have been many interpretations in the past, none have been as gritty or as really down to earth as this interpretation we have here. And Joaquin Phoenix had really big shoes to fill. He had to fill up for Jack Nicholson, Oscar winner, Heath Ledger, Oscar winner, Jared Leto, Oscar winner, and he just Joaquin Phoenix, Oscar loser. This film is directed by Todd Phillips, whose most previous well-known works was the Hangover Trilogy, and I really don't see very much similarity between that series of films and this new Joker film, which is a much more dark, introspective character study than the raunchy comedies that were the Hangover movies. I haven't really seen the first Hangover in a while, so I don't really remember if there's that many really memorable camera shots. That was one of the most standout like pieces of his directing I saw in this movie was camera angles and even kind of the motifs of like the stairs and other and kind of the underlying tension currently taking place in Gotham City which is kind of peripheral to our own story of Arthur Fleck which is the Joker's name in this movie but he does a good job of not overly explicitly stating what's really going on with Gotham citizens and why there's so much turmoil we kind of get his class turmoil between the rich and the poor but he does a good job of not explicitly stating this and kind of just giving us like news clips and like short scenes and stuff in the background that doesn't really like hit you over the head of its message. It's more, you gotta think, you gotta notice it for yourself. So, good job on Todd Phillips for that, as opposed to the Hangover movies, which, eh, not very subtle. So we'll start with the non-spoiler section of the review first. At a certain point, once I'm done with this section, it'll probably be a little bit shorter than the spoiler section is going to be, but... Once I am done with my non-spoiler section, I'll mark on the screen very clear that this is now the spoiler section. So if you guys want to skip to that or just don't want to watch any of that before you see the movie, just scroll through and it'll pop up on the screen like really big spoiler alert. So getting into like the non-spoiler, this movie hinges completely on Joaquin Phoenix's performance. And it's great that he gave one of the best performances I've seen this year, definitely, the last 10 years. I don't know. It's a really good performance. You can tell he, he put way, way more into it than any other actor probably would have. Even comparable to Heath Ledger's Joker, who also went to extreme depths to bring the character to life. Could it be better? It's definitely different. That's that's the thing, because Heath Ledger's The Joker was still comic booky in a way, with his crazy, overarching plots and plans and just his general evilness. Arthur Fleck's a very grounded character and a character that people could relate to on a more personal level, which is interesting because a lot of the drama and like the controversy about this film before it was even released was going to be a symbol for the incel movement, which if you don't know is an involuntary celibate, and it's just like a bunch of women hating people that just like spewing toxic masculinities, which is what they're kind of known for, and this movie is the complete opposite. Our character Arthur Fleck doesn't really harbor any hatred towards anybody. He just is a man who was raised horribly in a terrible situation. His mom was abusive. His stepfather was abusive. He is severely mentally ill. He can't afford to get mental health treatments. So I think it's more a, a, a look into how we don't really deal with mental health correctly in our today's society. Not much into hatred and killing women or anything so a lot of the controversy beforehand was unwarranted going into like the actual story of the film it's a it's a slow burn character study that kind of ramps up in the third act so if you're expecting a crazy comic book movie it's probably not going to be what you're looking for but if you want like a an engaging thrilling movie that keeps you eyes glued to the screen then i think this does work it's a slow burn so it takes its time to get to where it wants to get to, but that's all right, because we're trying to see this man's slow descent into madness, and 
the Joker is a character that's never really been explained before. In The Dark Knight, he was just a man that wanted to watch the world burn. But in this movie, we get to see really the the reasonings behind his motivations. And hopefully, that's the, that's the one problem. It's one of the non-spoiler problems I can say right now is that I don't know if we'll get a sequel from this movie. I would have loved to get a sequel from this movie. I'd like to see Joaquin Phoenix play this character completely as the Joker so we don't get to see that transition. Like, Because we, we got this. We've gotten the build of this character, so now we understand him more. But is that understanding going to be for nothing because we'll never see him again? I don't know. We'll see if they do another movie. I'm sure they will because I think it's making lots of money. So hopefully in the future we get to see Joaquin again. While Joaquin's obviously the star of the show and the driving force throughout the whole film, some of the peripheral characters like Robert De Niro does a great job. Zazie Beach does a really good job as well. The actress who plays his mother, good job. Thomas Wayne, also a good actor. So none of the performances bring down the movie. Overall, it's a great ensemble cast, even if it's hinged completely on the one man's performance. I've described this movie as dark, and while it is really dark, I don't think it's like unwatchably dark. It's not like, I don't know, um, I don't know if I'd even say it's as dark as something like No Country for Old Men, which is a pretty dark movie. And I think it's comparable to that on like the tone scale. Really gritty and realistic. All the violence is quick, fast, and kind of brutal. So if you want to know a film on similar tones to see if you, like, you would enjoy this movie and not get like too, I don't know, triggered or by it or something, I'd say it's similar to No Country for Old Men if you've seen that. So overall, to wrap up the non-spoiler section, I'll say this is probably the best origin film ever made. It really gets into the character more than we've ever seen before in an origin film for like a superhero or I guess, I think this is probably the first supervillain origin film I can think of. But like most origin films kind of lean more heavy into like the spectacle and the action scene towards the end. This one focuses more on the buildup and I think it's to the benefit of the movie because we really get to understand Arthur Fleck as the Joker and why he becomes him in the end. So overall, I'd recommend this movie. And if you've already seen it, now I'll get into more of the details and the my favorite things and some of my criticisms in the spoiler section. So all right, so the film begins with like probably the most advertised scene of the film where he's got the sign and he's dancing as the clown and those guys whack him. So that's the opening scene of the movie. Starts off with a, a slow camera zoom dolly shot of him putting on his clown makeup. Doesn't look as good as my clown makeup, but he's doing a decent job, you know. So it's kind of like a slow crawl. We hear news in the background kind of giving us some of that exposition I was talking about earlier, how it's like subtly telling you why Gotham City is in such a rough place right now but without overly slamming you with it so we zoom in on him putting on his clown makeup and then he's out there doing the sign stuff so we've all seen this before in the, in the promotional stuff it just seems a little kind of ridiculous i mean why are these random dudes just beating the shit some poor clown just doing the sign twirling thing oh you see a sign twirler on the side of the i'm like damn i'm doing a good job especially the dudes that do the flips and whatnot killing it i don't want to go beat them up so i don't know why they beat up poor arthur fleck here but Afterwards, we get to sympathize with him more, besides the fact he got randomly beat up. We learned that his laugh, which was also featured kind of heavily in the promotion, but it wasn't told until we finally saw the movie, that his, that his weird compulsive laugh is actually a disorder and that he um, was born that way. And it's kind of like a nervous tick. Like whenever he's like in a situation, he'll start laughing. And then people around him will be like, why is this dude laughing? And that leads into the eventual first confrontation, our first scene of violence, is because couple men on the train hear him laughing and they think that he's making fun of him so they start beating the shit out of him and earlier one of the clown friends who was working with gave him the gun so he has this gun out kills him it's self-defense do we really feel bad for arthur killing these people and it was completely self-defense you don't know for the first two then the third guy was running away and he was begging for his life arthur still killed him so that was our first glimpse into the psychopath tendencies that he could possibly have the sociopathic tendencies and obviously it gets more and more developed as the movie continues, but this is our first glimpse into the Joker that we're going to come to know. So Arthur has a side plot besides his clown job as his main, I guess, source of income is he's a aspiring stand-up comic. Fortunately, he's not really good because he's really nervous up on stage. He can't really perform the jokes well and his laugh obviously hinders his performance. So he, he, he tries it. Doesn't go very well, but he ends up on the, I guess, the Johnny Carson of the Gotham universe, who is Robert De Niro Murray, 
So Murray makes fun of him on the show, kind of like like segment where he like makes fun of shitty comedians, and it's like Arthur's like, "Wow, can't believe my hero Murray just roasted me like this." So that's also uh, so I think that was the second inciting incident that kind of builds up to his eventual breakdown towards the the third act was him getting beat up, having to kill these guys, and then Murray, his hero, making fun of him. This film kind of overloads you with inciting factors to explain why he eventually just completely goes crazy at the end. We also get another side plot of his mom, who's abusive, tells him that his father is actually Thomas Wayne. Yes, that Thomas Wayne of getting killed in the alley multiple times in multiple different movies fame. So we get a scene where he goes to Wayne Manor, and this is one of the strangest scenes in the whole movie where he does a magic trick for young Bruce Wayne. And then Alfred comes out of nowhere, just get these weird cameos. I don't know if it was really necessary for the film, because when we later get any like resolution from that, it's just when Thomas Wayne says, hey, you were talking to my kid, weren't you? And it's like, well, he already knew his mom, so we didn't really need another connection to it. I mean, maybe it makes a little bit more sense why Thomas Wayne's such a dick to him when Arthur asks him if he is his son. But also just the fact that he tells him his mom's a liar. He, she was not in an affair with Thomas Wayne. He wasn't his son. So that's definitely a third inciting incident because all of a sudden he has this father figure in his life that he never had, and then he learns it's not true, completely made up. So I think these three things, and he also loses his job, but I don't think he really cared that much about losing the job. It seemed like a shitty job anyway. So I think those are the three inciting incidents that kind of build up to his eventual breakdown in the end. So when we finally do get the final breakdown of Arthur Fleck, we get a lot of rapid back-to-back um, events that really encapsulate his new, like, dark path that he's going to go down as the Joker. We get one one of the side characters, Zazie Beach, played a neighbor of his. And throughout the film, we kind of see her with him in certain moments, like at his comedy show or in the hospital of his mother. But then eventually we realize that he feigned all this in his head and never actually happened so he breaks into her apartment and she confronts him and he's like and he realizes none of this ever happened we don't really get to know what happens between them i think it's possibly safe to assume that he kills her which is pretty brutal and probably why they didn't show it on the screen because there's more violence to be seen anyway so we didn't really need to see that but i think it, it's safe to assume he probably does kill her next we get a scene of him killing his mother which is another you can kind of rationalize it as it's not super psychopathic because she was terrible to him his whole life but at the same time she's incapacitated in bed and he just puts a pillow over to her face chokes her out it's pretty brutal kind of releasing his past demons in a way and we get a final third incident where his two of his clown workers from his previous job come to visit him in the wake of his mother's death and he brutally murders one of a pair of scissors and i think this is the final moment when we realize I think Arthur Flex officially become the Joker. So throughout all this, as I mentioned earlier, we were getting glimpses of like the overall city states throughout these scenes. We get to see mobs and riots forming as people are protesting and they're using clown masks as a symbol because the initial train murder, Arthur Fleck was only identified as a clown and because he killed a bunch of Wall Street people, it kind of inspired the city to come together and rebel against Thomas Wayne and some of the other wealthy individuals. And that's where we kind of get to see the underlying themes of the story, which well, besides obviously the mental health issues of Arthur Fleck, it's kind of a, a rich versus poor, not as much as a society, we live in a society thing, more just like they've been treated poorly, they're living in terrible conditions, the city's cutting funding everywhere, it's just, it's not great, it's going downhill, which I guess is Gotham City's usual narrative before the Batman arrives. The Batman. I'm not wearing hockey pants. And um, and so we get to see why the city's in such a terrible state before we get some, some justice, so to speak. And I guess Arthur Fleck himself thinks he's bestowing justice as the Joker, as we come to see. So after he kills the clown guy, we get a funny scene, which I guess is like the one like little glimpse into the hangover comedy past the Todd Phillips. As one of the shorter clowns is trying to reach for the sliding lock on the door and he can't reach it so Arthur has to come over covered in blood and unlock it for him and so after this he's become the Joker he just is in the full get up and he walks out um, all all cocky and whatnot finally feeling confident for once in himself usually when we see him walk it's kind of like kind of huddled over not really confident once he finally becomes the Joker he finally finds confidence in himself and so we get a scene afterwards 
This is a really good scene, but it was a very odd choice of music. If you know what I'm talking about, it's like a strange uh, rock song, classic rock song playing over him as he's leaving his house dressed as the Joker. And he, we get this scene that's gotten gift already where he's walking down the stairs kind of dancing in the the Spider-Man 3, Tobey Maguire-esque way. And um, so these stairs have been shown throughout the, the movie, I think twice or three times before, but each time he's walking up it and it's really dark and gloomy. He's kind of like trudging back to his life. But this final time we see the stairs, he's all in Joker makeup. He's playing, I guess, this happy music, the, the rock song, or I guess more upbeat than a lot of the music we've heard before. And he's, he's walking down the stairs as if he's leaving all his problems behind. So that was the one big moment of symbolism I saw. So I don't know if Todd Phillips is really the like a Stanley Kubrick putting symbols and everything, but and there were probably other instances I just didn't notice, and I'll probably catch on repeat viewings. So we get him walking down the stairs, doing the dance, and then this is probably my favorite shot of the movie. We get on the, the train, and two of the cops who are investigating the train murders see him, but he uh, escapes into the crowd, and we get this scene where he puts the clown mask on and kind of backs off into the crowd. It really didn't mean anything in the sense of the story. He was just getting away from the cops, but it was a really cool-looking shot as he kind of like is falls back into like his people like his minions so after this we get the climax of the movie as arthur arrives at the murray franklin show after being invited on because his his scene of bombing at stand-up comedy was such a popular segment they invite arthur to actually be on the show so he goes and he's in the full joker makeup and murray's talking to him before the show and this is the first time we hear the roll credits he says murray could you refer to me as the joker I don't know if I can do as good of a Arthur Fleck impersonation as my Heath Ledger one, but yeah, so he finally says the name. And I think this is where he finally accepts that he is now a new person. He's the Joker. And this is where we get the best scene in the whole movie, probably the best scene of 2019. It's the interview slash confrontation of Murray and Arthur as he interviews him on the talk show. So we get to see Arthur kind of like berating him, telling him that I was the one that killed the guys on the train. He, he admits that he's the Joker to everyone on live TV. I think everyone's watching this basically. It's like the back in the day, people would like only watch one show at a night with their families all together. So this is probably the show they were all watching. So everyone's getting to see Arthur revealing that he's the one that started like the inciting incident that created all the riots in town. So, and then he accuses Murray of being a bad person saying he invited him there just to make fun of him. And this is where we get the craziest scene as he, he pulls out a gun, caps Murray on live TV, and then all chaos breaks loose as the, the rioters outside actually start torching cop cars and breaking windows. And we also get to see, once again, Thomas Wayne and Martha Wayne walking out of the theater with little Bruce and one of the random clowns on the street. I guess it's Joe, Joe Chill? Is that the guy that kills the Bruce's parents? Anyway, we get to see again him pulling the pearl necklace and killing the Waynes. And also we get a final like kind of iconic shot of Arthur as he's been arrested following Murray's murder. Then another car smashes into the cop car and he gets out and he's bleeding and he draws the smile on his face with the blood and all the people around him are cheering and he's officially the Joker. He's got minions to control. He can create all the chaos he wants. And we finally get to the step in his transformation that's close to all the Jokers you've gotten before like Heath Ledger's Joker, Jack Nicholson's Joker. You're my boy Jared Leto's Joker. I guess, no, he's not really like that. Jared Leto was kind of a really different interpretation where he's more of a, a gang banger, gang leader guy. And then the movie ends with a final scene where he's in the mental hospital getting interviewed and he murders the psychiatrist and he walks away and is definitely officially the Joker now. Just broke out of Arkham, I assume. So overall, this movie was amazing. I'd recommend it. It's definitely going to get a nod for Joaquin, probably for writing. Maybe even Todd Phillips, which would be hilarious. Um, best picture? I don't know. That's a stretch. Best actor for sure is a shoe in. So, so overall, hope you guys enjoyed the review. Let me know if there's any other movies you'd like me to review. And make sure that your wife isn't getting deep with shocks. For my life, can't say that, girl. Don't tell me you can say that shit. All she want is payback for the way I always play that shit.